I saw ten dollars and eighty cents. Yeah. I already bought a burger. Yeah. McDonald's is paying more. Actually, they got to go up two dollars. Just fucking up to that, you know, because they have to. Yeah. Except for the ends, like they. Yeah, we're going to do the next time. Wow. Yeah, do the That's why it was that period. Yeah, well, it's not because McDonald's is paying four bucks an hour. Yeah, so you buy it by being, you know, government, whatever, they can be exempt, but it, the trickle effect is that everybody's going to leave to go to the private council, so they have to write. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could I, I never dreamed that that would be. Yeah, I think we're paying ours thirty two. People really like it. I know the one for police department is thirty two thousand. Yeah. 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 Allen. Here. Johnson. Here. Approval of the minutes? No, to approve. Jacobs? Yes. Lund? Yes. Watts? Yes. Allen? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Adoption of the agenda? Good. Oh. Jacobs? Yes. Lund? Yes. Watts? Yes. Allen? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Okay, next we have presentation for Black History Month. I believe do, do I don't know where Susie is. Yeah, Susie's in here. Yeah, come on up front. <laughs> I don't know what that man's name is. Morris Collins. Oh Morris, yeah, he's like that. I'm fine with yourself. Good thing. Good. Hello, Morris. Okay. <clears throat> Today we have a proclamation, whereas across the nation, February is recognized as Black History Month. And in 1976, the designation was formally adopted to honor and affirm its importance. It is important to recognize the positive contributions to our community made by black Americans. And whereas from the determination hard work, intelligence, and perseverance of members of this community, there have been valuable and lasting contributions in our schools, churches, social and economic institutions, and homes. And whereas throughout our nation's history, black Americans have honorably answered the nation's call to serve in our armed forces. And whereas Black History Month should involve youth as well as adults of all ethnic groups and foster a spirit of cooperation and mutual respect among our multi-ethnic communities. And whereas, during this month, all Americans are encouraged to reflect on the past successes and injustices, look to the future, and continue to improve society so that we live up to the ideals of freedom, equality, and justice. Now, therefore, I, be it resolved, Danielle Johnston, Mayor of Warrensburg, Missouri, along with the members of Warrensburg City Council, urge all of our citizens to work toward creating a community in which black Americans are respected and recognized for their past, present, and future contributions our community, the state, the country, and the world, dated this 11th day of February, 2019. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mars. Okay. And we do have one other. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> All right, this is American History Proclamation. Whereas the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution sponsors February as American History Month each year. Whereas to stimulate a knowledge in both young and old and a sense of pride in our nation's greatest achievements and dedication to liberty. And whereas to stress pride in the United States of America through the community services and educational programs, essay contests, and historic tours. And whereas through the study of American history, 
We are made aware of the importance of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity in all of our lives today. And whereas the importance of always remembering American history should be noted. Now, therefore, I, Danielle Johnston, Mayor of the City of Warrensburg, Missouri, along with the other members of the Warrensburg City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2019 to be American History Month in Warrensburg, Missouri, and urge all Warrensburg residents to join with me in this month in recognizing the importance of American history in our lives. In witness, whereof I hereunto set my hand and seal on this 11th day of February 2019. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Council. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I love it. Thank you. Can we do a quick picture? Oh, I think you got fans. Oh, <laughs> 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 right. Thank you. Again. Thank you. You bet. Next, we have a public hearing to rezone land located at 810, 820, 830 Enterprise Drive from General Business to R2. Madam Mayor and City Council, this is a, a larger project there's, uh, than we normally see or have seen recently. There is a map in your packet um, that looks, uh, the area looks like this. And so the property that we're talking about involves a couple different current parcels of land. One of them um, is a piece owned by the Myers, uh, Larry Meyer, and the other is a piece owned by the Delosier family, Dale Delo or uh, uh, Mace Delosier at this point. And the, De the Delosier piece is, all of it is currently, both of them zone general business at the moment. On the Delosier piece, only the north, kind of one third of the property, that part that's uh, surrounded by yellow, that's the only part of that property that's being requested to be rezoned. The rest of it would remain in general business. On the Meyer property, again, the part uh, outlined in yellow is the part to be re rezoned. That southern, almost 175 feet wide strip, uh, that is would remain zoned general business. So the request is to zone, rezone from general business to R2, which is one and two family dwelling district. You have another item on your agenda this evening, which is the preliminary plat of Winterset Villas. And if the rezoning is approved, then he would move forward with the final platting, and, or the preliminary plat and the final plat of, of this property. And so then you could see uh, on that agenda item what that future layout of the area would look like. It does involve pushing uh, inter or Park Avenue through to the east to Enterprise Avenue and uh, it connects back to the west with Pride Avenue there just north of our Furniture. <coughs> the um, staff did receive a couple uh, comments from the public on that. One was from Kelly Taylor, and she wanted general information about the request, uh, didn't state uh, for or against, and then also was contact, staff was also contacted by Darren Baldwin on behalf of the Baldwin Farm there on the east side of Enterprise Avenue, and he stated they were against the request because of increased traffic concerns on Enterprise Avenue and the intersection of Enterprise Avenue and Highway 50. Um, a fear that with the increased traffic, there uh, could be a closure of that connection point at some point by MoDOT. Uh, the Planning Commission considered this request at their meeting last week and recommended approval. Staff has recommended approval for the reasons stated in your staff report. We would be happy to answer any questions. I know Mr. Colson, who represents the developer, uh, is here as well to speak on behalf of the applicants if you have any questions. I have one. The big part partial there where it says Park Avenue, if the east didn't get developed, there's only one way, one way out and in, right? Right. So if it didn't continue on to Enterprise, if, if Park Avenue didn't continue on to the Enterprise, um, then there would be a limit from that point where Pebble, Pebble Creek tees to the north, and you're gonna correct me if I'm wrong, but from that point forward, there would be a limit to how many dwelling units could be emptying onto that, and I think that limit's 30 or 36? 36. 36, and that would include the existing ones on the north side already. 
so it would severely limit the development of that land. Okay, you yes. answered my question. I didn't know what the limit would be with one way in, one way out. So, <coughs> yeah, it's so if that other part, excuse me, if that other part did get on Enterprise, that'd be another exit for them or not? For right. Park so Mr. Avenue. Coulson's, what he's proposing is to extend Park Avenue all the way through. Okay. Yeah, his, and that's on the drawing um, on the other agenda item. It does show it pushing the okay. street through. But that's why originally I think his project just included, for a while, just included the Meyer property. And then as he further developed the concept, he went uh, to Delosier's about the additional land so he could push the street through. That was, he brought that to the table. Yes. <coughs> and then on that, I mean, I, I know, so it looks like the general, or the general business area that we're rezoning, and then below that is that existing house and that little bit of land there. So that's going to remain general business? The ex yes, that little area is to remain general business. And um, on the plat, then it's just platted as one large lot. Right. It might be replatted in the future when developed in a commercial nature. But uh, for now, it would be replatted as one large lot. The house would remain. Uh, on that one large lot, and, and it does not present any setback uh, um, concerns. I mean, they've got the setback requirements. Okay, and then on the on the future on the replat map, it shows another connection in the enterprise to give us two connections in the enterprise. So the Meyer property already includes that little seventy-five foot wide strip on the <coughs> south end that runs parallel to Highway Fifty. So when you buy the Meyer property, you get the large piece and that seventy-five foot strip out to Enterprise on the south end. Okay. It's also already zoned general business. You see it on the plat. You don't see it in the rezoning. Okay. So what it looks like on the on the plat map, there's right this moment there's no intentions of building anything in that area it looks like everything was above there right i mean that's mm -hmm. the thing. what they're currently presenting to us has no building right. happening there okay so not really to question the staff but i know sometimes you've made the comment going from general business <coughs> down to the apartments is sometimes a no-no not a no-no but i don't know what the word is for it. so this you don't think will ever be any general business we think they've preserved that ability along the corridor of 50 where you have the visibility and the traffic, the, the high volume <coughs> traffic that you need the eyeballs on commercial to, to, to do that. Uh, I think with the commercial to the north, um, you've got fourplexes along the north part of that already. Right. Uh, the duplexes is some of a buffer between that as well as I think um, from an access standpoint, it would be challenging to develop as commercial with, with the inner, I mean, you're never gonna have a big interchange there. You're not gonna have a, a full intersection to, and there's not an ability to bring a, a frontage road, a true frontage road from Pride Avenue on the south side. There's not enough room between the MoDOT right of way and our woods to put another outer road in there to give access to that, which is what you would need to use the whole area for commercial. If you if you could get that in there, then it would probably have already developed as commercial. You also pointed out during the planning and zoning that uh, any development of that as commercial would also kick in the uh, uh, the buffering requirements. Uh, yeah, so the, the piece that he's left as general business will have a, um, a landscape buffer requirement right. on it between, on the commercial piece between it and the R2. Right. And we'll trigger that. Thank you. We'll close that public hearing. Next, we have first and second reading on an ordinance approving and accepting the final plat of Hunter Hollow, third plat subdivision in the city <coughs> of Warrensburg, Missouri, located on the north side of the 800 block of West Gay Street. 
at a recent meeting, you had the preliminary plat of this project. This is the um, Hunter Hollow Third Plat. Takes uh, the land that was rezoned last summer and one of the existing lot seven of the existing plat of Hunter Hollow Second Plat and combines that into uh, one area and then redivides it out into six buildable lots with one unbuildable lot, the tract uh, A on the north side of the developable lots that front on the Gay Street. So this is very consistent with the preliminary plat you saw last month. Um, they've made all the changes that were requested by staff, and staff would recommend approval. The Planning and Zoning Commission considered at their meeting last week and recommended approval as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Colton is here if you have questions. I just have one question for Slam, and I don't remember this. For traffic, <coughs> they can only park on one side on there, or can they park on both sides of the street? going down there to Cape Hollow area as they're building those. <coughs> I have to look at that on the street width over that area there. Uh, but they uh, may be a width that they can park on both sides. Because I have seen several be parking on both sides, so I didn't know if that was. They, uh, there's been some discussion from we, from police park, just as a side note, the discussion that uh, Gay Street Chestnut on to the park that uh, try and get some reduction in parking, maybe no parking at all on the street. But there, that has been a discussion of the traffic commission. Right. I know you remember. Right. Move that the uh, said bill be passed second reading by title. Jake, <coughs> excuse me. Jacobs? Yes. Lund? Yes. Quads? Yes. Allen? Yes. Johnston? Yes. This is an ordinance approving <coughs> and accepting the final plat of Hunter Hollow, third plat, a subdivision in the city of Lawrenceburg, Missouri, located on the north side of the 800 block of West Gate Street. This is for adoption or rejection. Jacob? Yes. Lund? Yes. Watts? Yes. Allen? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Okay, next we have an ordinance approving and accepting the minor plat of Garden Walk, a replat of Lot 7, Hawthorne Development, a subdivision in the city of Warrensburg, Missouri, located at 1105 Thompson Street. So this is the minor plat because it contains uh, less than three lots in the end. Um, this is Lot 7 of Hawthorne Development, which the city currently owns. <laughs> and is in the process of working with the developer and uh, a tax credit project for multifamily <coughs> housing. This is the lot that sits on the east side of what is now Thompson Street. If you'll remember, we renamed that in December. So that is uh, Thompson Street. And when you look at the plat, the plat creates two lots. One is the 10 acre lot that the developer is interested in building the uh, multifamily project on, and then everything else is lot 7B, the, the remainder of the original lot becomes lot 7B. Along the south side of this plat uh, is the dedication of right of way for the extension of Cooper Boulevard to push all the way through to the east to Hawthorne Boulevard. So you do see that running along the south property lines, new property lines of 7A and 7B uh, throughout, the, throughout this whole minor plat. <coughs> Staff had uh, several comments that Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval with. Since then, uh, we did review a revised set of um, construction plans this last week. We received those since the Planning Commission meeting, and it had a new easement on it to facilitate a, a, an electrical um, uh, main, a main. Yeah, that's the main. <coughs> um, and so staff has added number eight on the ordinance. That is a new condition since the Planning Commission meeting. Uh, and that would be to show and label a new east-west easement that will bisect the lot almost right in the middle. Uh, and that would uh, mostly be for power, but it would be dedicated as a standard storm drainage and utility easement. So there, that has changed since the Planning Commission meeting. Um, so staff would recommend approval of the ordinance as submitted. This, uh, make sure I understand, this, this easement that was added by staff was after the plat? It was after it came to the Planning Commission. Okay. Yeah, I think 
Pete Slim told me about it Tuesday afternoon. Well, we've got the construction plan to observe this new easement and then they're going to Okay, but the developer provided the construction plans. Yeah, the developer okay. and he where's Robert? Right. Yeah. And they're still settling on the very final location of that, right? We have a general idea where it's gonna be. Yeah, it's with the electric co company now yeah. and they're uh, haven't got their final design yet. So that easement <coughs> vary just, just to allow them to, to okay. have service because they now require service in the front yard and we had design on the, the back. All right, thank you. Yep. Move to pass that ordinance to second reading by title. Jacobs? Yes. Lund? Yes. Wads? Yes. Allen? Yes. Johnston? Yes. This is an ordinance approving and accepting the minor plat of Garden Walk, a replant of Lot 7, Hawthorne Development, a subdivision in the city of Warrensburg, Missouri, located at 1105 Thompson Street. This is for adoption and rejection. Jacobs? Yes. Lund? Yes. Watt? Yes. Allen? Yes. Johnston? Yes. We have an ordinance to rezone land. <clears throat> okay, public hearing on an ordinance establishing an R2, one and two family residence district by rezoning land located at 810 820 830 enterprise drive from gb general business district to r2 one and two family residence district that's it said bill moved the second reading by title Jacobs? Yes. Lund? Yes. Watts? Yes. Allen? Yes. Johnston? Yes. This is an ordinance establishing an R2, one and two family residence district by rezoning land located at 810, 820, and 830, Enterprise Drive from GB General Business District, R2, one and two family residence district. This is for adoption or rejection. Jacobs? Yes. Lund? Yes. Watts? Yes. Allen? Yes. Johnston? Yes. We have a preliminary plat of winter set villas. So on the <coughs> plat, you can see with the bold outer line, it's on the second page. The first page is mostly leaving these. Um, but with the second page, the bold outer line, that then is the boundary of the plat. So it encompasses, um, it encompasses the Meyer property as well as, and including that stuff that's some general business along the south end and then the, the uh, property on the north end from the Delosier property. So it does create 55 buildable lots and one track day. Track day would be used as an uh, open space. Some of it will be used as a detention basin, uh, though not all of it is, is a drainage easement. Um, they do have an internal street network that they would provide. Uh, it, the lots are sized so that they would accommodate duplexes um, from a minimum lot size standard. They're being, um, they're larger than the, the minimum requirement for single family. They meet the minimum requirement for duplex and, and all of them do. Um, the right of way improvements would be required along west side of Enterprise, <coughs> and so you've seen those on there uh, called out. There are a few items that uh, remain that need to be addressed, so we have included those in the ordinance. Uh, Planning Commission recommended approval last week with those seven conditions, and they've been included on your ordinance. Are there any questions? Move said bill be passed second. Actually, reading. there's not a bill, so yeah. as a preliminary plan, oh, it's preliminary. a motion to approve or a motion uh, approve with conditions. Right. So you motion to, to approve with, with the conditions that are stated on the ordinance. Okay. Jacobs? Yes. Lund? Yes. Watts? Yes. Allen? Yes. 
Johnston. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay, next we have a follow-up conversation on the animal shelter service level expectation. So last council meeting, uh, <coughs> we had a work session beforehand where uh, Mr. Hackney provided a, a presentation regarding some of the issues and concerns. Uh, we wanted to give council some time to reflect on that. And so this is just kind of an opportunity for you to discuss asking for the questions that the staff needs some direction on on what the expectations are going forward. I do want to clarify, however, though, that we're not getting down in the nitty gritty and making any budgetary decisions. We'll have the budget process here in, in several weeks. Uh, but what staff needs the direction on is big picture uh, <coughs> service level and expectations and those types of things as far as what do you want our animal shelter to look like? What services are do we need to provide so that as we go through the budget process, staff can prepare the proper things to bring forward for consideration by council for the budget process. So with that, I'll leave it open for you guys' uh, conversation uh, on that. So are we, are we talking animal shelter dog pound? Or are we talking? That would be one mean, element of the conversation, yes. Because I personally would like to see it be an animal shelter. It sounds like that's an increase in staffing and some other stuff that needs to happen to have that happen, but that's the direction I would like to go with it. Well, I think Joe and I talked once um, sometime, and I, I think I even said something to Harold about it. I think if you don't have the shelter, my opinion is they're going to take the dogs or animals out in the country because I have a friend. She didn't do that. She found a home for it, but she wanted to take it to the animal shelter, and the animal shelter was full. Yep. But I think the alternative is dumping them off there. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see as much as we could mm -hmm. for the animal shelter <coughs> to be not a dog pound itself. I mean, I think that direction's already established, uh, you know, with uh, what's happened before, the naming and, and all of those things. I agree. Uh, um, you know, and I, uh, I wasn't aware that that we had gone so far already, mm -hmm. the council, uh, to uh, to make it a animal shelter versus a pound. Uh, and I think we need to proceed down that road yeah. with manning and everything else that's required to support it. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware that, there was a different, that we had a difference in classification. I mean, yeah. I think that's the direction we were heading, but I right. wasn't aware of that either, so. Is the position of uh, whatever director of the animal shelter, the, Joe is just sitting there temporarily. He's in the room. Yes, correct. Is that position being hired out or in the process we of that? Waiting to, to see what the council wanted from the shelter to determine what that position would really entail because it could be different based on what level mm -hmm. of services you want to provide. So I like the direction <coughs> that you've taken it so far, and I guess my question would be moving forward at the budget that we have that position would that be would we be able to attract a qualified candidate to continue that direction we believe so i think that position was included as part of our wage and benefits study uh, what we really have is an issue of for all basically what we're running is we're running an animal homeless shelter mm -hmm. and we have animals that have been in there nine ten twelve months because we can't find homes for them. And the longer you hold on to them, the more costly it gets. Right. And then because they're in there for a long period of time, because we're staying at capacity, uh, we don't have the staffing levels necessary to be able to properly maintain the, the kennels and cleanliness and all those types of things. Uh, we don't have the budget necessary to pay the veterinary bill that comes with animals that get sick in there, uh, et cetera. And, and so that's where, again, we need to have a conversation on the, on the service level. Um, but to answer your original question, we believe that the, the salary that's established for that has been recently vetted and checked through our, our process, and we feel that that is a competitive salary. Uh, the real issue will be is if we're going to continue to maintain these service levels, uh, it's going to need to be given additional funds and you're prioritizing that over other city services and needs that we're going to need, and that will be discussed through the budget process. Well, it's certainly not operated as a for-profit 
uh, you know, with the fees that we charge. We're nowhere close. Nowhere mm -hmm. close. Right. So, <laughs> you know, with that said, it's, uh, and if, if we're going to operate it as a shelter, it's, it's going to require the bucks to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other alternative would be like to proceed on potentially contracting out the operation of the animal shelter. Mm -hmm. There are communities that do that as well, but that has its pros and cons to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see, you know, as man, home of man's best friend, I'd like to see us maintain the animal shelter status as well as increase the service level um, to a standard. Having seen the industry standard KPIs that, uh, that Joe presented, we, we are lacking in a few areas and it's going to be necessary to contribute funds and staffing to um, get to the required levels, but also to get to the um, community service aspect <coughs> of what we want to see when people go out there uh, and I'm hopeful that we can increase the service level but also look to ways to create efficiencies um, of how do we get these uh, animals adopted faster um, and I think that will help with some of our physical capacity issues but we definitely need staff now. I, I think that presentation that last month that Joe gave was definitely eye-opening as far as, yeah. I mean, because I've always known that we probably need to give some more money over there, but it was never presented to us as, right. as I mean, I would say Joe presented to us as a major priority, but he showed us the numbers and the facts of this is what you're spending, this is what you need to spend, and this is what you need to do. And I think that was, that was definitely eye-opening for me because I know every year I would say, How's the shelter? And I would told, well, you know, we can use some money, but we'll we'll survive, you know. So, as far as uh, financing uh, for the thing, uh, is is there any thought uh, given to uh, like when when we were discussing the old Ron Plaza, we talked about uh, dog food manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, contributing uh, to the to that effort uh, if we are you know I mean pie in the sky kind of kind of thinking if 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 we were a regional uh, shelter uh, would it would it be something that uh, could attract some funding from uh, corporate like a dog food manufacturer I mean that's obviously not something we're going to do this year but something to give some thought to I think that it would have a bigger net. I think you could cast it out a bigger net with that yeah. and attract some more attention that way. I think forming a stronger regional partnership would be would be beneficial, you know, mm -hmm. not just from attracting maybe a corporate partnership, but just uh, increasing uh, the volume mm -hmm. of other places that will provide services and, and having those conversations. Well, capitalizing on on home of man's best friend, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, using that as a uh, uh, as, as as kind of the go-to uh, slogan, uh, you know, I think you might be able to sure. handle something like that. I think we talked about the county. Maybe they could, if they're not mm -hmm. contributing, maybe they could partner with us a bit, and every little bit helps when you're asking for. Well, we do have a contract with the county where they pay so much for mm -hmm. animal that brought in from a county resident. I think that's at $90 an animal right now. Uh, and I think the county picks up, uh, I want to say, mm -hmm. 70 of that. And, yes. and then the resident pays the additional 20. Yes. So we already have that, and that was negotiated a couple years ago. I don't know what the county is going to budge on their yeah. budgetary contributions in that. I think aspect. I asked this a few weeks ago. The partnership we have with Nam Noster, do they provide a stipend as well for animals? We pattern that off of the county agreement. So if they bring animals over to us, they pay the same fee that we negotiate with the county. Except in that case, the city of Mount Nostra would be paying the full $90, not the 70 that the county does and then the resident pays the 20. The city brings it to us and they pay the $90. Are we seeing a lot of animals from that partnership? We <coughs> A, a, a fair number. Um, our, our biggest would definitely be from uh, just the county. The county. Uh, but yeah, we do receive a, a fair number. 
Do we see anything else from like Leeton, Windsor, and in? It's kind of hard to track it. Yeah. You know, most of them just turn into county fines or county square, okay. squares. Okay. Yeah. But uh, it is kind of hard to. You know, sure. I just feel that, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, I think we're the voice of the dogs and the cats that are out there, so I'd like to see a, a well-ran shelter and not a dog pound. Mm -hmm. yeah. What type of information would you like to see uh, provided to better consider this as we go through the budget process and for some? Um, something in particular that you would like to see that would be helpful to making a decision of uh, what you would like to have added to the shelter or um, is there anything in particular you can think of that you would like to see presented to you? I, for, for me personally, I'd like to see how much, I mean, how much do you need, you know? Okay. What, I mean, because if you give me a number that's half of what you need, and we start working on the budget and cut that a little bit, then it's a third. I'd prefer to know what the number is you guys really need. Yeah. And then that way I know what the real numbers are. Because I think that's one of the problems is I never, <coughs> I never had the real numbers. One of the things that, up, that would be important, I think, is, is to differentiate between staff and, and volunteers and, and make sure that's highlighted in, in the budget uh, process. Uh, the... Uh, Right now, there's one position paid. Is that the animal shelter? Mm -hmm. No, one full time position. Full time, and then yes. We have several part -time. part time positions that are paid. Okay. And then we did, we did go far enough along to, to look at other positions that might be used in that when we did the, the Austin Feeder study. So, in addition to a shelter manager, we did um, we look at assistant shelter manager and we did some of those kinds of things concurring to other communities. Yeah, that would be really important. Yeah, I and think I, I personally think that assistant manager's position is probably vitally important. Yeah. Because yeah. I think because what we had out there for several years was one person running the show. Yep. And I don't think I don't think people knew what was really going on. And you know, and without that without that information until she departed and you took over and then we found out what we really had out there, I don't think we were making decisions based on what we needed to what the true information was, and that I think she had it and wasn't, and it just was not getting relayed to us. So. I would like to know what the um, volunteerism looks like out there because I think, in many ways, that could be one of the um, possibly easier organizations to get people on board with sure. sometimes. And I don't know that I heard necessarily how that could potentially offset. Um, some of those man hours that are needed or at least what the volunteer drive well, is at this time you'll from time to time you'll have people that are really committed to it mm -hmm. where they'll come out and they'll volunteer and do the cleaning and do um, some of the, the manual labor however it's been my experience and that you can't rely on that yeah. consistently to help supplement the day-to-day -day, <coughs> um, cleaning that you need you can use that to help um, maybe socialize the animals and get them out of the cages more often to make them more adoptable that way. And we have been doing that. We've been encouraging um, folks to come out and actually um, work on that, which is good. And those are the types of things you can get volunteers for very easily. Mm -hmm. But the like I presented at the prior to the last council meeting, the capacity care guidelines are how much you can contribute to each animal at staff time. Mm -hmm. and it's hard to put volunteer hours into that equation because it's so <coughs> consistent and so I mean it's so far in between to get folks that can commit to that on a regular basis and for from a budgetary standpoint you wouldn't want to sure yeah yes um, another thing i'd like to add just in terms of the position and it, it's also been my experience that the shelter managers that have had a lot of success have had very um uh, have been very have like a business background, very with that type of mindset, um, because it is very much a business-like entity. Um, so that's an important uh, quality to have, and that takes a lot to kind of focus on it to make it, you know, operate smoothly like a business would. Um, so one of the areas that we would 
might, we might want to consider looking into is focusing or having a position like the assistant shelter manager, for example, maybe focus more so on animal um, health and animal care, be a coordinator of that. Um, so that way you can kind of divvy up those responsibilities. Because I think when you're trying to have one position focus on both, one, one doesn't really get done completely, you know. Um, so that's just another thing just to kind of have, just to consider. Well, Joe and I talked also about if a dog comes in and it's a golden retriever and you know other counties around that someone's looking for one, call mm -hmm. them up and say, hey, I just got one. So we talked about that, right. trying to get these dogs adopted more often, you know, quicker. Yeah. Sure. And we've opened that up, like the, like the mama that I reported on that didn't like me yeah. last week. Um, we got her out to a foster network. So there are, there are possibilities for certain and you know, very specific cases that people are looking for such a thing. So we're trying to open that up and really, you know, um, we've had some success with that. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's kind of hit or miss just depending on what you have in particular. So. Is there a sharing of information between uh, animal shelters um, uh, via the web? Um, yeah, there, I mean, there's... Population, I mean, population sharing. Is that Pet Finder? Yeah. Yeah, there, yeah Finder? There's, there's networks like that to where yeah. you can post your information and if somebody sees something that they're interested right. in, they can reach out and contact you. At the same time though, we are trying to run it as a business. Right. So right. they're, they're want to claim your popular ones that are really aren't sure. too hard for you to get rid of, right. which also people are probably willing to pay for, mm -hmm. which is one of our few opportunities to get any money back in to help support the cost right. of running the shelter. So we've got to be careful that we're not just shipping off all <coughs> of our, our favorites and we get left holding mm -hmm. the ones that nobody wants right. with, with no revenue coming in mm -hmm. right. from the popular ones. So there are, I'm sorry, I was going to say, there are some cases where, I mean, there, people will come from all over for a specific animal. We had somebody come from the, the, the northern tip of Iowa to get one. I was kind of shocked, but yeah, they came all the way here to get one. So, I mean, there is, there is, um, some ability to do that with specific cases, but the less desirable or where we're trying to really, right. you know. And those also more than more than likely have some type of medical um, need, which is ex expensive in most cases, and that's usually a prerequisite to getting them adopted is fixing that medical need because most potential owners don't want to take on that cost themselves, which just creates this cycle where we're sitting on it waiting to get the care for it that might need, um, and that's what's also stopping her from getting adopted. And so, uh, I think I think we have the direction we need. So we'll, we'll work on that through this budget process, and, and you'll hear more, and then we'll we'll show you some too uh, directly as we go through the, the department tours, and we're going to take you out to the animal shelter and show you what's going on. All right. Thank you. Okay, we have appearances to the council not listed on the agenda. Okay. Um, I don't have any mayoral appointments today, but I will for next time. Um, I believe we'll have a park board opening. Uh, miscellaneous matters from the mayor and or city council. Well, I have one thing. Uh, Sheriff Munsterman stopped by. Uh, the office today and asked me to bring these uh, brochures introducing uh, Proposition P. Uh, I've passed these out to all of the council. I have a few extra. If anybody is interested, uh, please stop by and see me uh, afterwards. And he has requested um, some council time to maybe discuss this. Uh, I instructed him to contact you or to coordinate through uh, you or Rich uh, to get him on an agenda item uh, to be able to talk about this a little bit more. So, and he will be making the rounds. Uh, to present this, you know, to the Rotaries and the and the Kiwanis and, and those around the county, uh, but it's a countywide uh, initiative through the sheriff's department. So, uh, when he contacts me, I'll get it on the agenda. I'm trying to be careful <coughs> that we're not supporting or lobbying, but we keep it to an informational conversation. Yeah, I think yeah, that's that's what this brochure yeah, kind of breaks it down to. Yeah. Sometimes you get in there and get talking, though, and it can go a different direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the city manager's report. Uh, it'll 
sound like deja vu from last council meeting, but again, I just wanted to express um, gratitude and a job well done to our public works staff uh, through this recent ice storm. Uh, I haven't seen an ice storm like that in several years, and that was a pretty good doozy. And uh, our staff had our, our main road uh, traveled pretty much throughout the storm, and I received a lot of very positive comments uh, from people that travel to our community of, of how much better our roads were than other places they had driven. So again, kudos to our public work staff and our, our public safety that were out in the weather when no one else wanted to be there, <laughs> and uh, they did a great job uh, this, this last storm again. So I don't have anything beyond that to report this evening. Good luck on the next storm. It's probably coming again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Director of Finance report. Uh, the thing revenue uh, bounced back up this month. We're kind of doing a yo yo this year. Up one month and down the next. And I've seen preliminary numbers uh, for February and it's, it's continuing that trend. <coughs> We had a lot of electric bills at our office this month that were. They got the tax credit. Yes. Yeah, and that, Huge. And that is, they are basically telling us that uh, our portion of the, the franchise fee has been affected by that as well. Uh, and we don't see it that way. Yeah, that was a shocker. Mm -hmm. well, obviously, we got over 500 properties, but there was a lot of big. Thank you. Barb? I have nothing additional. Thank you. Lynn? Speaking of the weather, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for just for council's knowledge, uh, each time there's trucks pull out, we do the sand salt application. We use somewhere in proximity to 300 pounds of material. Uh, and that's the first time they have to do that case. Sometimes they have to do this one or two times a storm. I'm not creating a panic or anything. We do have plenty of material on hand, but we have reordered, uh, which we will be running over our budget now uh, that we have this year. Uh, just be safe, not knowing what's ahead of us uh, this winter. And uh, salt is our back order. You imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can't get it back within uh, 30 miles of this place. <laughs> 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 Gone already. <laughs> Three weeks at least before we get yeah. uh, this so we, we are taking deliveries to Sam, but we took deliveries today. Uh, so we're in no way in any jeopardy of not having enough material, but we want to make sure that uh, we have seen snow during that year. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I remember that year. <laughs> well, yesterday they were calling for snow, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Is still the case? Oh, we like to let the people be warm for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stay north. And speaking of the storm budget going over budget, if you'll recall, in, in the good years where we didn't spend all of that, we did create a special reserve right. storm <coughs> fund right. for years like this mm -hmm. that we could still budgetarily absorb that. So we're, we're sitting well financially from that. Well, we're just over what we had estimated on Mother Nature hasn't got the message that she only supposed to snow money through Friday, so we have to pay overtime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I. Our city barn looks like a homeless shelter. Yeah, uh, I imagine. The, cops, <laughs> the guys have spent a lot of hours yeah. uh, on that. And I really appreciate it because the city and the council, as a, as a my staff, have done a good job and uh, really put their heart into this. So, thank you. Thank you. I know you're not 
probably prepared to release any numbers, but the roundabout. We're not, uh, we're still studying the, the bids and we're to uh, <coughs> get back some information on those. So, okay. Uh, uh, I would say by next council meeting, we probably Super. have some information. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we have a screening coming up uh, on the 22nd. Um, look out there t today, because tomorrow is the, the final sign-up. We uh, had put in uh, spots for 60. Um, we have 51 as of 5 o'clock this evening. Um, and I already know four others that, that are going to be getting in there. So we're getting really close to our 60 uh, uh, spots uh, in there. And uh, so that's considerably up from the last time. I think I wasn't here, but in, in visiting with Matt, I think we only had maybe 19 or 20 um, um, before. And so uh, that's come along really well. Um, and, and we're making good progress, you know, in terms of, of just this year getting the groundwork set. Um, because as you've known for the last <coughs> several years, we're, we're trying to get to a self-insured status and one of the primary uh, things you have to have uh, to make a success of any kind of a uh, self-insured program is a, a healthy wellness uh, uh, program going along with it. And so uh, this is the means to getting that started. So uh, that's, that's coming along real well. So along with that, and part, probably part of the reason why we're getting such a good turnout <coughs> on this is uh, we sent a letter out to all employees last week encouraging them to sign up for the, the, uh, the screening but uh, there's a couple incentives there to, to help employees with that. And what we've offered is a $15 uh, per employee incentive per paycheck that the health insurance premiums are withdrawn from, so 24 pay periods a year. Uh, $15, if they do the screen and sign some documentation for the city, they'll get $15 per pay period <coughs> for an employee, for a spouse that's covered underneath our insurance, and any dependent 18 or older that's covered under our insurance as well. So again, try to encourage healthy lives, help them to know their health and manage that. And then in addition, we have um, some uh, Fitbits and, and Garmin um, bracelets that we're providing <coughs> employees and their spouses and their dependents 18 and older that are on our plans uh, at no cost to them to, to manage their, their health and, and, and those types of things. And we're kind of taking a phased in approach. Uh, we've set the bar pretty low this year next year we'll ramp up the requirements to qualify for some of those incentives um, uh, for that as well. But uh, glad to see the employees are responding well to it and uh, hopefully that'll pay dividends in the long run. And, then, and the other piece that <coughs> come along with the screening piece is, again, we're not going to have any individual data, but as an entity we'll get back uh, data from those that, that gives us an idea of what um, you know, programs that we might be able to offer, um, you know, as a, a population, we may have um, certain things, uh, you know, like, you know, hypertension or something like mm -hmm. that as a, a, you know, more than average uh, as a group, and then we can, um, you know, talk about healthy eating or exercise programs and things that will help with that specific thing as part of uh, the lunch and learn. Thank you. I mean, um, we uh, have started a uh, GoFundMe account for replacing our canine, uh, replace canine, and currently um, at the GoFundMe account we're setting at forty-two hundred and forty dollars, and 
We have also had donations come in and t-shirt sales totaling 1890, so we have total 5130 for replacing the gun. So, mm -hmm. That's all we have. And that hasn't been in effect that long, has it? Yeah, it's just been about a week. Um, month, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. good. Well, you're like one million views on the uh, yeah. the one post <laughs> helped. So that's good timing to put out the GoFundMe right after that. Did so where does somebody get a T-shirt? Do what? Where does somebody get a T-shirt? Uh, you uh, located them at the front of, front office of PD. Um, Denise and the, the ladies up front they have them back in in the uh, secretary office there. So I think they're fifteen dollars. That's what they're um, charging. Uh, PD. Employees <coughs> have uh, first bids at them, so they put them out so that employees open them up to public so completely. So, so we can't go get one yet. I'm sure you probably can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just got them in, so it's just been a couple days, so they're trying to put it out to the PD officers. So. Do you want to tell about the aftermath grant? That's with the aftermath. I'm sorry. Uh, aftermath's the one that gave the t shirts, and they. Uh, they donated an extra 500, is that correct, towards the K-9, so that was pretty impressive. So. Good. Yeah, it was five. It was 500 at the that people voted for cities. You know, any, I mean, there's people from, I mean, Kansas City, St. Louis, and we got 500 from that, and then. You know what that lady's name was? Jess, Jessica or Jesse? Uh, yeah, Jessica. I'm not sure her last yeah. name. Uh, she actually is a student teacher yeah. at Maple Grove, my wife, mm -hmm. and um, she uh, wrote to Aftermath. I believe wrote to them and yeah. spoke to them personally, and uh, they end up coming up with another five hundred dollars. Yeah, so Super. she told them about Gunner's situation. And the you know, the president wrote another five hundred dollar <coughs> check for that. So good. Yep. Uh, vote to close part of this meeting pursuant to section 610.021 of the revised statutes of Missouri relating to one legal actions causes of actions or litigation involving the city and any confidential or privileged communication between the city and its representatives and its attorneys Two, leasing purchase or sale of real estate where public knowledge might adversely affect the amount paid in the transaction three hiring firing disciplining or promoting of particular employees by a public governing governmental body when personal information about the employees discussed or recorded 12 documents or any documents related to a negotiated contract until a contract is executed or all proposals are rejected and 13 individually identifiable personnel records performance ratings or records pertaining to employees or applicants for employment Jacobs yes Lund. yes Watts. yes Allen yes Johnson yes Thank you. 